Laser sights can deter threats and aid in quick target identification, enhancing your ability to protect your family, home, and country. Crimson Trace, making laser sights standard equipment. Learn more at crimsontrace.com. Today on Tom Gresham's Gun Talk, are you prepared for the aftermath of a self-defense shooting? We talk training, hardware, politics, your range reports, and more. Call in now. One Tom Talk Gun. Now, here's Tom. All right, with you, Tom Gresham. It's Gun Talk. We're going to be having some fun today. we got a game to play. got some things to talk about. We have some news that are just going to break your heart. Not really. <laughs> but it is news. Oh, my goodness. We're going to be talking about, um, hmm, what if you do get into a self-defense situation? What happens then? We're going to talk to people who really know what they're talking about there. That's going to be fascinating. Also, we might even be able to talk about one of the most uh, famous and most influential gunsmiths who ever existed. We have a lot on our plate today, but mostly what we're going to be doing is talking about the things that you want to talk about, because we're going to be, for the most part today... We're going to be open lines, because I know that there are people who think, boy, I I have a question. I have a, what about this? Nine millimeter versus 45 versus, dare I say it, 10 millimeter? Is there any reason to have a 10 millimeter? Is it just this weird little cult following? (laughs) Perhaps. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. You know, proud to be a member of the cult, I guess. Uh, our number, by the way, is 866-TALK-GUN, or just t- dial Tom Talk Gun. Easy way for you to get in there. Oh, my goodness. So many things going on. So many stories out there. Um, let me throw this out. I just I want to play this game, because it's one of my favorite games, frankly. Because there's n- <laughs> it never ends. We've been doing this, well, I've been doing it pretty much all my life. It's probably, if you're a gun geek like I am. You're, you've been doing it too. If you had to, I know it's a horrible thought, if you had to cut back to only, I'm going to pick a number, four guns for everything. Three is never enough. Four seems to be horrible <laughs> But doable, horrible. Oh my God! Only four guns. Oh, oh, an horrible. Perish the thought. But if you had to cut back to four, what would they be? Action type, caliber, even brand and model. I would like to know what your choices are. Revolver, semi-auto, pump, rifle, shotgun, calibers. And this would be not just, you know, like for the walking dead survival type of thing, but just kind of for also for fun shooting, hunting. If you said, I'm going to go do, I'm going to hunt it. I'm going to have to uh, use defending myself for fun shooting. How would you construct this mythical, incomprehensible, I hate the idea of it, four gun firearm battery? What would be your choices for that? And I certainly have mine. I mentioned, I teased, I looked through it a little bit about uh, 10 millimeter. That's been around for a long time. And it's interesting that it just kind of keeps hanging in there. And yet, and you know, we have created two, up to this point at least, two gun talk 10 millimeter handguns. Some years back, we did the uh, the GT10, which was, we did that project with Kimber. It was 1911 and 10 millimeter, all dolled up, tricked out, really nice. And then we worked, I badgered SIG for three years about doing a 10 millimeter. And couldn't get them to go, couldn't get them to go, and then finally said, okay, we're ready. And we came out with a SIG 10 millimeter pistol. We call it the GT20 to commemorate 20 years on the air of Gun Talk Radio. And each time we do a limited run, roughly 250, I think we did 260 one time, 
Um, and they have been wildly popular. People love them. So why? Why the 10? You know, of course, you remember that the FBI, after the infamous and horrendous FBI shootout in Miami, where the FBI but it got its butt kicked by a couple of bad guys who outshot them, they, they say they were outgunned. Nah, they, they were out-tacticked, if it's such a thing. They were outgunned. They were, they were outshot. So the FBI said, well, the, the problem clearly was the 9 millimeter." Yeah, that's what it was. So they went with the 10 millimeter, much more powerful. They did that for a while, and then they figured out that not everybody could shoot it, or the gun was big, and agents with small hands couldn't shoot it. So they backed off and created the 40 Smith & Wesson, which is the 10 millimeter light. And then a lot of law enforcement agencies around the country went with the 40 because that's what the FBI used, because the FBI, of course, knows all. And now you see agencies going back to the nine. Hmm. What's going on here? What is the role of the 10 millimeter? Certainly it's powerful. It is not quite, but almost a 41 Magnum. It is much more powerful than a 45 ACP. It actually exceeds the 357 Magnum, which is saying something, because I think the 357 Magnum is one of the best cartridges ever created, and certainly one of the best defensive handgun cartridges ever created. So what what is it about the 10? Do you, do you have a 10? Do you shoot a 10? I would love to know what your thoughts are on the 10. And there's a reason I'm bringing it up, because I think there's going to be growing interest in the 10. I think... Things are, I keep seeing more companies bringing out tens. Now, yeah, I know they're small, small numbers, real small numbers. But it's always there and it never goes away. If it were, if there were no reason for it, it simply wouldn't be here anymore. It would just it'd be, oh, yeah, yeah, I remember the 10. But they're just always there. And every gun maker, every handgun maker says, yeah, you know, people just keep asking us for those. And it's like they don't really want to acknowledge it, but yeah, it's just, yeah. Oh, yeah, speaking of. <laughs> How about a 10 millimeter revolver? Mm-hmm. People say, why would I do that? Because I get a 41 Magnum. Well, okay, I'll go with you on that one. But there has been a 10 millimeter revolver. Smith made one. All right, your thoughts. Uh, you got to pick, you got to cut it down to four guns. And it can be any four. But that's all you're allowed to have from now on. What would they be? And also, if you have any thoughts on the 10, if you have any experience with the 10, I'd love to get that. What pistol? What do you use it for? Why did you get it? 866-TALK-GUN or just dial me at Tom Talk Gun. Be right back with more gun talk. Your guns are hungry. They crave lead, feast on recoil, and are ravenous for performance. On the menu... Agula Ammunition's complete line of rimfire, centerfire, and shot shells. Each and every round of Agula Ammunition is made with the highest quality of materials and crafted to ensure optimal reliability, accuracy, and proficiency. Visit AguilaAmmo.com and let the feeding frenzy begin. Agula Ammunition. Feed your firearm. If you carry a gun, you need training. Your concealed carry class was definitely not training. But time, money, and obligations keep you from spending days at a shooting school. The trusted folks at Gun Talk can help. Concealed Carry One, our DVD featuring the Vata Group, covers what gun, what holster, how to carry, where to wear your gun, and much more. Visit ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. Look, this really is life and death. Learn how to stay aware, how to get away, and how to fight if you must. At ShotGunTalk.com, you can get the two DVD set, including Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. No matter what gun you carry, this vital training info can save your life. Learn the draw, the stance, reloading, vital gear from Gun Talk. That's ShotGunTalk.com. ShotGunTalk.com. 
Smith & Wesson brings 10 years of development to your holster with the new enhanced M&P M2.0 semi-auto pistol. In 9, 40, and 45, with a crisp and lighter trigger pull, the M2.0 has aggressive texture for a great grip, extended stainless steel chassis for rigidity, and four palm swell grip inserts for a perfect fit. The remarkable M&P, even better in version 2.0. See it at smith-wesson.com. This is fun. <laughs> Here in the break, we're doing the whole, uh, only four guns, huh? Really? Really? Only four? Can I have five? No, you can't have five. Only four guns. you got to pick four guns, and this is going to be the whole deal of, if you could have only four guns, I mean, how many times has that come up in a uh, hunting camp or at uh, the gun store counter or at the shooting range? If you And I've heard it, you know, only three guns, only five guns, whatever. Four is a number. Just pick a number. All right, but that's that's the question on the floor, and the number here is 866-TALK-GUN or just Tom Talk Gun will get you in here. Dan's called in from Magnolia, Texas with a, an idea. Hey, Dan, if you had only four guns, what would be your choices? Well, Tom, number one would be Ruger 1022. Absolutely the okay. best 22 long rifle made, in my opinion. Okay. Number two for... A little bit more firepower, longer range. The uh, Remington Model 700 and 22 250 caliber. Interesting I have one of my choice. Guns. I have one in my gun safe, and it is my most beloved hunting rifle. No um, kidding. I, okay, now, now, what do you do with the 22? I mean, obviously, you shoot prey dogs and things like that, but what else do you hunt with it? Uh, ho- wild hogs, white tailed deer. Um, I have shot an axis with it, axis deer. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, you name it. Uh, I'd, I'd take anything hard. on with my twenty two to fifty. It's that accurate. Wow. Okay. All right. So we got ten twenty two and Remington seven hundred and twenty two two fifty. Got to have a shotgun. So uh, probably a Benelli Nova twelve gauge, or possibly if money's not an option, Benelli M three. Okay, it's a 12 gauge shotgun. I like it. So uh, you started with a pump, then you moved yourself to a semi auto. Yeah, um, I'd probably stick to a pump for simplicity. So, okay. Making me choose, okay. I'll, take the, uh, I'll take the Nova. And then, okay. uh, got to have a pistol also. I love my uh, FN 40. Ah, okay, okay. All right, so we've got a 1022, a 22250, a 12 gauge pump, and a 40 cal semi auto FN. Yes, sir. Hmm. All right, Dan, I, I, like, I like your choices. I don't think there's any problem. All right, I'm going to let you. I know you had one more thing you want to throw in to go for it. No, that no, that's it. Uh, uh, okay. Love your show. Don't, don't listen as much as I should, but. Uh, Love your show. Well, you're right. If you're if you're not listening to everyone, you're not listening as much as you should. I'm with you there. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. I, I like the choices. Those are good. Hey, Nick's got uh, some ideas on that. He's lying two out of Minnesota. Nick, four guns. That's all you get. What's your choices? Uh, Forty-five seventy carbine. Oh, pump action, nice. Twelve gauge. Uh huh. And a forty-four magnum revolver and a forty-five nineteen eleven. Forty-five Tall. seventy carbine lever action, right? Yeah, lever action yeah. carbine. That uh-huh. take down anything I want to. That's survival or hunting. Okay. Whatever you want to shoot. The pump action okay. twelve gauge for anything that flies. Mm-hmm. And the forty-four magnum revolver and uh, the forty-five nineteen eleven for protection and uh, protection against large game. Son of a gun. Now, see, I, I wasn't surprised you didn't have a twenty-two. I figured everybody was going to pick a twenty-two somewhere in there. So that's really interesting, Nick. I, I like your choices. For, so we got forty-five, man, twelve gauge, uh, forty-four magnum, and forty. Man, we're Nick's a big board guy. You can tell, a big board guy. All right, let's go to David on line one out of Texas. David, four guns, not three, not five. What's it going to be? Oh, this was actually fairly easy, believe it or not. I would take the Ithaca double barrel two twenty three over twelve gauge. 
the Ruger 44 uh. Super Black. I'm, I'm sorry, the Ruger 44 Blackhawk single action, uh, the Ruger mm-hmm. 1022, and the Tika 30 out six. I could shoot anything on this continent with that. All right, describe the Ithaca because there are going to be people out there who don't know what you just you named. I, I think, it, I think it was I, I think it was a turkey special. It was called back in the day, but you can still find them on gun on the online. But there, it's a twelve gauge barrel weapon with a uh, 223 on top, and so you you have a selector switch, and you can shoot the shotgun or the rifle, <clears throat> and it'd be real handy mm-hmm. for deer hunting in Alabama and Texas, where I live now. But the other thing is that when I was a kid growing up, I had a 20-gauge single barrel, and I could double on quail with a 20-gauge single barrel. I would put a I would put a shell between my fingers on the forearm, and as soon as uh-huh. I peeled off that first round, I'd shove another one in there and shoot again. Wow, that's very cool. Interesting idea. I had not thought about the combo gun of a 12 gauge, you know, with a, a rifle barrel. You know, and that also brings up a thought, David. Uh, the idea of the German style drilling, which is a double barrel shotgun oh, love- with a rifle on there. If I had ten thousand dollars, I'd own one. Okay. <laughs> well, I did not put a price limit on this, so we're just playing now. <laughs> well, I hey, guess David, I can thank dream, you. That's, right? that's, 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 <laughs> Uh huh. Exactly. We're just dreaming here. Okay. We're just having fun. All right. Everybody pour themselves, you know, two fingers of whiskey. And let's talk about the four gun challenge. All right. So we're talking about four guns. Robert's in North Dakota. He's in Williston. Uh, only four, Robert. What are your choices? Well, Tom, I just made it easy on myself because there's billions to choose from. So I just picked four of the firearms that I own. So uh, I started with the, I'll keep the, Bush or the Bushmaster BA 50 cal bolt action for stupid extreme long range. I could shoot anything on any continent, and I would take the Remington 30 odd six bolt action. Uh, I would keep my uh, I would keep my Remington 870 pump 12 gauge interchangeable mm-hmm. barrels. I would mm-hmm. keep my CZ 75B. 40 caliber semi-automatic pistol. Interesting. And uh, you said something in the middle of that that uh, we were talking about during the break, which is when you said a 12-gauge pump, and, and I said, yeah, because with that, you can put tactical stuff on it for that. You can put different link barrels. You can swap out the stocks. You can do. You can basically modify a 12-gauge pump a lot of different ways, and you can do everything from quail to ducks to turkey to home defense with it. Yes, sir. That's why. That's why. And plus, the 870. You know, it's such a workhorse. You know, it's such a reliable workhorse. So I, uh, I would definitely have. I mean, I have a, uh, I have a couple of ARs. I was like, oh man, I got to sacrifice my ARs. And I have mm-hmm. a uh, real nice Browning 12 gauge. And uh, I get rid of that. If I had to keep four, that would be the four, the 50, the 30 odd six, and the 870, and the 40 caliber CZ. I think. Interesting. You know, it is. It's like saying, I'm going to get rid of some of my children. He says, yeah, but it's only four. You only take four. <laughs> That's the hard part, man. Cause I, yeah, no, but I, but I want, yeah, I know. You can't have all of them. Hey, Robert, thank you for the call. Appreciate that. It is one of the more fun things we do, and it makes you start thinking, okay, if you had to, and not that we would ever want to, okay, because you know my line, right, when MSNBC was interviewing me, and they, they asked me, they said, well, how many guns do you own? And my answer to them was, well, more than I need, but not as many as I want. <laughs> huh, four guns. I am a little bit surprised that we haven't had more in the way of the 22 in their 22 room fire, because in terms of just going out and shooting and having fun, wonder if you were going to pick a 22 rifle, which way would you go? We had one selection of a, the Ruger 1022, which is excellent, would certainly be high on my list of possibilities. I also kind of play with the idea of a lever action because I do like those. Lever action 22s are just fun. And then, of course, there are some really fine, and remember, we don't have a price limit on this. Doesn't have to be something you own currently. Just looking for your thoughts on four guns. You do the mythical idea of you, if you could have only four guns to do everything with, what would they be? 
Well, maybe would you go with a bolt action 22? Just because there's so many really nice, accurate 22s you can take out to the range. You could use that to teach people to shoot and, and just, you know, just basically just have a bunch of fun. Hey, Mark's in Shreveport on line three. He's got an answer to the four gun challenge. Hey, Mark, what are your choices? Oh, yeah, I'll make it easy, easy for you. Okay. I own them all, and I can do anything I want to do with these. Not perfectly, but anything I need to do, I can do with these four. Mm -hmm. Block 17. That'll be my mm -hmm. carry gun. Anything I need to do with a handgun, I can do with a Glock 17. An okay. standard AR-15. That would be self-defense. Mm -hmm. Maybe some hunting with it, but primarily mm -hmm. a self-defense. A right. pre-64 338 Magnum. Ooh, that would be nice. for deer and all the way up to moose. A little mm -hmm. overkill on the deer, but okay. It'll kill them just as good. And a Remington yep. 1187, 12-gauge, three and a half. Okay, so we got a 9mm semi-auto. Uh, we've got an AR in 223. Uh -huh. We have a 12-gauge. And... We ended up with the 338, which I like. I will tell you, I have shot a uh, small white-tailed deer with a 338, just about uh, oh 50 miles from where you're. If you're in Shreveport right now, from where you're sitting, uh -huh. and you know what happens when you shoot a, a deer with a 338, you get they your go deer. down. Yep, they go down exactly. All right, and I've also shot stuff that weighed 3,000 pounds with a 338, and they go down as well. So I like that choice. Hmm. And it's interesting because it wasn't the one I came up with. Hmm. Tell you what. Hey, Rob, don't go anywhere. I'm, we're going to get to you. And if you'd like to join Rob and me, because I am going to eventually tell you my choices. Now, here's the other thing. I totally, and I will give you permission to do the same thing, I totally reserve the right to change my mind at any time. <laughs> so if I name four, that doesn't mean that... Five minutes from then, I wouldn't change and pick four others. But here's the question, and the question's on the floor for you. you got to pick four guns. That's it. You get to have forever. What are they going to be? 866-TALK-GUN. That was the number. Love to have you weigh in on this. And also, we got a sad, sad story of a politician who went bad on us. Sign up for our Gun Talk newsletter and join the Truth Squad at www.guntalk.com. Now, back to Gun Talk with Washington Times opinion page regular contributor, Tom Gresham. And we're back with you. Of course, we're still asking the question. If you had to pick only four guns, only four, not three, not five, only four, and that had to do you forever, what would they be? But first... Sometimes the irony is just delicious. The protege, one-time protege of Senator Chuck Schumer, the leading anti-gun proponent in Congress. Anthony Weiner. Yeah, I know, I know. All the jokes, the name, I get it. Carlos Danger. Anthony Weiner pleads guilty. To a sex crime. Remember the whole deal of uh, disgraced former Democratic Congressman Anthony Weiner? Well, he has now pleaded guilty on Friday to a charge of transferring obscene material to a minor. And he will now have to register as a sex offender. Now, Weiner's career, this is a story from Dave Workman, by the way. Weiner's career came to an embarrassing halt, he says, in 2011 when it re was revealed he had engaged in sexting with multiple women. He had sent them sexually explicit messages that he had first tried to pass off as a hoax. Then he tried to run for mayor in 2013. That got nowhere. Then his communications with a 15-year-old girl that began in 2015 surfaced last year. This is when things got very interesting. As a result of a federal investigation that began when the girl told a news agency about the exchanges. But that investigation also led to the bombshell revolution, revelation 
that Wiener's laptop contained emails that had been sent by Hillary Rodham Clinton to Huma Abedin, Wiener's now estranged wife. I think she just filed for divorce. Huh. It was this discovery of those emails that led to FBI Director Comey announcing that his agency was reopening the investigation of Clinton. And here's the final takeaway of the whole Anthony Weiner thing. He will serve time. Part of his plea agreement is that he would not appeal any sentence that was no longer than 27 months. So he'll serve probably two years, or at least he'll be sentenced to two years. You know what that's going to make him? Da-da-da! A prohibited person. Yes, friends and neighbors, this gun control advocate will now forever be prohibited from owning a firearm. Hmm. There you go. Four guns. That's all you get. Let's go. To, I want to pick up Dottie first on uh, line one out of Louisville, Kentucky. Dottie, four guns. That's all you can have. What's your choices? My first choice would be my thirty thirty with the scope. The second one would be my 12-gauge Mossberg. Mm-hmm. The third, I have a 22 Savage and the hmm. 38 Pink Lady. Oh, the 38 Pink Lady. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Very nice. Now, uh, do you and you already own all those guns, right? Yes. Okay. Excellent choices all the way around, Dottie. I like them. Thank you for your uh, your patience on hold. All right, let's pop up to a Rob on two. He's out of Hayes, Kansas, and Rob wants to play. Rob, you only have four guns to last the rest of your life. What are they going to be? Well, I'll take my H&K Benelli M1 Super 90, a 1911, a Browning Abel 30 6 with a bullet drop range finding scope, and a mm-hmm. uh, AK-47 7.62 by 39 with a 75 round drum. Oh, my gosh. AK. Didn't see that coming. Why? Well, it's it's good for intermediate game, similar to white tails and whatnot, and it's a good defensive round, and with a 75-round drum, it doesn't matter how many bad guys you're coming at you, you got it covered. <laughs> and, and the other thing is the AK just keeps running, doesn't it? Yeah, I saw something online where they picked up one that was buried in the desert for two years. They wiped it off, and it ran. Yeah, I mean that's that's the deal with the AKs. They just flat run. Interesting choices. We're seeing some here, hearing something that I had not thought of. So uh, I, I like them. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that call. Uh, line four. Pat's with us out of Buffalo, Wyoming. Pat, what's on your mind today? Well, you, I was listening to you earlier, and you were talking about people not picking very many twenty twos. Um, mm-hmm. I would pick a twenty two TCM to keep. Really? Why? Are you from? Well, they're the same size as a 9mm. You can reload them. We've got it in a rifle form now. Um, yeah. They're just a fun little gun to shoot with the, with now, the 22 PCM. I, I, I guess the question would be one, and people are going to say, yeah, but what about finding ammo? How are you finding ammo for the uh, 22 TCM? I'm not having any problem finding ammo whatsoever for it. I've got a, I got an ammo can that's probably 3,000 rounds plumb full of it. Okay. Well, that's, that's, <laughs> that's a bunch. All right. Well, thank you, sir. I appreciate that call. All right. Let me throw in. I said I would, t- I would reveal my choices. Now, as I say, don't hold me to these, okay? Because uh, after, uh, after the break, I may change my mind. <laughs> um. I think I think I have to have a 22 rifle. Either either the Smith and Wesson M&P 1522, their AR style 22, or a Ruger 1022, or a bolt action. Hmm. But I think pick one of the semis. Okay, for a rifle, I think a bolt action 308. And for me, because I shoot from the left side, and because I just kind of like the whole concept of it, maybe the Ruger gun sight scout rifle, maybe. But at least I think a 308, because you can find ammo for it everywhere, and it can do whatever you want it to do. And certainly I can shoot anything in North America with it for hunting. 
Shotgun's going to be a 12 gauge pump, just flat out. Is uh, just too versatile not to have it in there. Slugs, buckshot, uh, different barrel lengths, different types of stocks. Is you can just do so much with it, and you can hunt big game with it too. But there's not a handgun in there. So what are you going to do for a handgun, Tom? That's the hard part. Because I do like my handguns. But I think, I think, and this is the hard, it's hard. I think I got to go with a 357 Magnum revolver. Yeah, I know. Really? Everybody go, really? Yeah. 38 Special, you can shoot that at the range. Have fun with it. And with Full House 357, you've got a terrific self-defense cartridge. But you also have something you could hunt with, if need be. Hmm, I don't know. I'll tell you what, let's take a quick break here. I'll ponder it. I may change my mind when we come back. <laughs> and you can uh, join us if you had to pick, uh, pick only four guns. What would they be? Shotgun, rifle, handgun, caliber, gauge. What are your choices? 866-TALK-GUN gets you in here. I'm Tom Gresham. The battlefield, where tyranny is laid to rest, where freedom comes of age, and where legends are conceived. Introducing the FN 509 handgun, a direct result of over 1 million rounds of testing. Descended from over 125 years of the world's most battle proven firearms on battlefields both foreign and domestic. The FN 509, a legend in the making. Learn more at FNAmerica.com. If you're like me, you don't have money to burn, but you still want to buy guns, ammo, and accessories. That's why we created Gun Dealio. That's a free, yes, a free smartphone app. Just download it and start getting the deals. Could be discounts, offers of free magazines for your gun, or you could be the first to hear about new stuff from gun makers. Here's how it works. With Gun Dealio on your phone, you get alerts when you enter a gun store. Special deals, you know. You don't have to do a thing. It'll do a lot of other cool things, like let you watch gun videos and listen to Gun Talk podcast. Plus, check it anytime for hundreds of deals and offers. Getting more while spending less. Smart, huh? Gun Dealio. Made in America. Gluten free at the App Store and Google Play or gundelio.com. Alien Gear Holsters, the most comfortable and concealable holsters on the planet, is offering big savings with our new two holster combo. Now you can buy two complete holsters for as little as forty nine eighty eight. Choose from any available holster styles and colors for the guns of your choice. All of Alien Gear's quality products are made right here in the USA and include a 30-day trial, forever warranty, and free shell trades for life. Visit AlienGearHolsters.com today. Get into a discussion, you think this just makes me uncomfortable. I am not liking this. That's kind of where we are right now because we're discussing the possibility, the idea, the concept, the nightmare of having to do with only four guns. It's a game we play. We do this around the campfire at hunting camps and in gun stores at shooting ranges. And if you could have only Three guns, four guns, five guns. Well, I just picked four. Uh, if you can have only four guns, what would they be? Playing the game. Uh, John writes in. He says, well, if I had to pick four guns, they would be, number one, Winchester Model 70 and 300 Win Mag. I can take anything on the North American continent. Number two, my Mossberg 932 12-gauge. Number three, Remington Model 722-250. He says, I need to hunt groundhogs. Okay. Number four, Ruger Bisley 45 Colt. I'm very accurate with this. Okay, so we've got a bolt action and 300 wind mag, a 12-gauge pump. I think everybody's kind of throwing in a 12-gauge pump or a couple of gone semi on that, semi-auto. 
Uh, Room Team 700 and 22250. That's interesting because that's the second 22250. Uh, and a Ruger Bisley 45 Colt, 45, uh, some people call it the long Colt. Excellent cartridge. Yeah, interesting choice. Interesting choice. What I don't see, uh, you, you could call the, the Bisley a self-defense handgun, but generally people wouldn't make that their first choice. It's just kind of interesting. All right, let's uh, go to line three. Ken's with us out of Cachetta, Louisiana, with his choices. You can only pick four, Ken. What are they? The first one would be a nine millimeter automatic. Mm-hmm. The second one would be a forty one Magnum uh, Smith and Wesson revolver. The third mm-hmm. one would be a Breeze three hundred three Enfield number four. And the fourth one would be a twelve gauge uh, side by side. Uh, wow. Side Okay, that's the first side by side, and it's certainly the first uh, British three hundred three, British Enfield three hundred three. Why? What? Are you, why do you want pick those? Uh, the British three hundred three. Uh, you can either shoot uh, full metal jacket bullets, which you can shoot small game with it, or else you can use uh, lead tip bullets and shoot deer with it. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, and why a side by side as opposed to a pump necessarily? Uh, with side by side, you know you ain't got the two shots, so you have to make the shots count. Okay, all right, that's a good thought there. Thank you, Ken. Appreciate that. I'm going to tag on to that one. Here's an interesting thought. Assuming you couldn't, we're just playing games now. If you couldn't find an access to parts or a gunsmith, if you had a side by side with two triggers, you essentially have two single shot shotguns. So if one side goes down, you still have a functioning shotgun. <laughs> Food for thought. Line two, Charles, Humble, Texas. All right, Charles, you're down to only four. What are they? Tom, the first one would be the Ruger Red Hawk 8-round 357. I can shoot 38s in it. And yep. you can get those uh, spear plastic bullets for target practice, and you can even shoot them in an apartment. Uh, uh-huh. The second one would be the SIG 320RX with the optional uh, compact size barrel and slide. The third one would be the, I think it's Mossberg 835, 3.5-inch, 12-gauge with the 28-inch barrel and a short slug barrel. And the fourth one would probably be the SIG MPX with the 16-inch barrel and the short SBR with the SIG silencer. (laughs) <laughs> That's a nice package. I like that. <laughs> you you gave this some thought, didn't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hmm. Yes, sir. That uh, I actually had an eight thirty five at one time, and I let it get away from me. But uh, you could literally do anything with that eight thirty five. You know, with the mm-hmm. optional barrel or two. Yep. Exactly right. No, I, I think you're right. And for those who don't know, you could also, with the right barrel, you could turn that thing into essentially a rifle, 100, 150 yard effective rifle with good slugs with these shotguns. So you could make, what could make the argument that that would take the place of a rifle or some rifles? I don't know. It's, it's just hard to say. But there are some really interesting choices here, and people are putting a lot of thought into this. When we come back, we're going to have a range report because William says, do not listen to gun talk. Okay? <laughs> I think he's got a point to make here. Uh, William, don't go far. We'll get to you. Ted's with us. Uh, we're going to get to your four gun. We'll also uh, take your calls. If he had to knock it down to only four guns, what would they be? Caliber? Action type? Rifle? Pistol? Shotgun? I know. It hurts, Stephen. Think about it. 866-TALK-GUN. Later on in the show, we have a uh, one of those real-world lessons on 
a gun safety thing where it could have gone bad, badly, but didn't. We we'll also have a uh, story that I can share with you, pers- personal story about uh, an accident on the range that happened last week while we were there. It was freaky. It was unbelievable. And no, no one would believe it if we didn't have video of it. Pretty weird stuff. I'll, I'll share that one with you just a little bit. But first, William's in uh, Alabama, line one, with a story for us. William, your range report, please. Well, sir, I grew up. There's a saying down here, you never go to the grocery store when you're hungry. I'm adding, never go to a gun show after listening to Tom Gresham, because I just self-enabled <laughs> myself into a, a brand-new Smith & Wesson revolver. Oh, talk to me. What did you get? Well, about a week ago, I got a very nice Ruger Red Hawk 357, beautiful gun. Mm-hmm. Went to the gun mm-hmm. show and saw a Smith & Wesson 686 Plus with a four-inch oh. barrel, stainless, when I looked at it, I said, "I said that dirty word." I go, "I don't, I don't need that." And then I came to my senses. I, I, I could hear, I could hear your voice in the background. I could hear Jim's, uh, uh, the the enabling song playing. I go, ah, "Ah, let's take my money. I need that." So, and uh, just, you know, left, oh, left, left there, went straight to the range, put about three hundred rounds through it. My goodness, that thing is an absolute work of art. It, you know, it is the year of the revolver. I don't know what's going on, but, man, we're, we're all jumping on revolvers this year. Amen to that. So did it, did it feel like weird going to the double-action revolver? Did you shoot the uh, thirty eight? What did you shoot with it? Uh, I put about 100 rounds of thirty eight through it, about 100 rounds of three fifty seven, and uh, just kind of run a few... I, I kind of try and, and keep sharp. I put a couple of snap caps in there, a couple of three fifty seven, mm-hmm. a couple of thirty eight, just to kind of try to. Mm-hmm. I uh, that's that's something I struggled with when I first started shooting was you know low and to the left and and trying mm-hmm. to anticipate sure. that recoil. So just uh, you know, ran a little bit of everything through it. Well, it it's just, it's awesome. I cannot I cannot recommend that enough to anybody thinking about one. Isn't it an eye opener when you actually shoot a full house three fifty seven in there and you go. Wow, I had forgotten that that is really a Magnum. That is a heck of a cartridge. It's, it's got some oomph to it. That's right. <laughs> it does. That's all it. Of that. well, so, so you bought two revolvers. You got your Ruger Red Hawk. Or, 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 did you say a Red Hawk or a Black Hawk? Red Hawk. Red, so you got the Red Hawk, and then you bought a Smith & Wesson double-action revolver, too. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's <laughs> like, like I said, I, I could hear Jim's enabling song and your voice in the background going, don't ever say that dirty N-word. Need is not in the set. Just get, get it, get it. Go and get it. You're the revolver. Okay, I'm, I'm going. I'm going to shine a little light on you here, William. I got a real strong suspicion that you don't need any help to self-enable. You know, I, I've come to find that uh, to be a very true statement, there, Mr. Gresham. <laughs> but yeah, that's it's right. easier to go with Tom, it's Tom Gresham's fault. It's Tom Gresham's fault. That's right. Blame it on me. Am. Why not? Just take a number. Everybody <laughs> else does. <laughs> There you go. Hey, thank you. You're going you're gonna to love those revolvers, man. I, I tell you, I am all over them. I, thank you for that uh, range report. That's great. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah, the Red Hawk, well, we were just shooting that eight-shot uh, 357 Red Hawk at the range the other day. Wow. What a sweetie. That thing is built like a bank vault. I just love it. And then, of course, you know I got that uh, Smith seven-shot 357 uh, three or four months ago and three-inch barrel. Good grief, grief. I just love that thing. I love that revolver. I don't know what it is. I just, I got the bug for revolvers right now. And it's just, like I say, I call them the analog version to semi-autos being digital. They were kind of going full retro, but boy, they do work. They are tons of fun. Hey, you know, if you get into a self-defense situation, whether or not you have to shoot your gun, if you just pull it out, you need some help. And we're going to be talking about what happens afterwards, because a lot of people have this idea a lot of it came from tv but they, it's, it's pretty much all wrong we'll talk about that this is important stuff i mean seriously this is really important stuff you need to hang around because this could be everything for you